Dead people. If I want to wear a tie, I'll wear a tie. <laughs> Defy the stereotypes. Down with stereotypes. I got myself ready for you by going to see a performance of Hair <laughs> in New York, and uh, I feel in the mood. <laughs> My thesis for your consideration is that the God-botherers are at the door again. <laughs> and that we, in Australia, and in America, and in other countries, must stand up for the secular state, for the separation of church and state. <laughs> My proposition is that this is a dangerous time, and that it depends upon people like Ted People, and the message from Sydney 2010 to go out to every country that secularism is a protection for spirituality. It's a protection and a space for the beliefs of everybody. And only by secularism will we maintain respect for every belief and for people who have no belief, for the people of the here and now. And it is in danger, it is at risk, and we've got to do something about it. Now, this time last week, I went up to Hong Kong. Uh, it was for a one-day conference, and I travelled economy down the back of the plane. It's amazing what happens when you leave high office. <laughs> you lose your Commonwealth car. Everybody should have a Commonwealth car. <laughs> and you put down the back where you belong. Well, I went up there for a conference to mark World Anti-Homophobia Day. And the day was chosen because it was the day uh, in 1972 that the World Health Assembly, uh, which is the governing body of the World Health Organization uh, in Geneva, decided to remove homosexuality from the list of the world's madnesses. And so it was removed. And we commemorate this day by uh, the recollection of it and of our need to make changes and improvements. And present at the meeting, in the first of the big meetings that UNDP had ever held in Asia, were mostly straight people, some gay people, uh, and uh, some of the straight people were people of high office. One of them was Justice Ajit Shah, recently retired as the Chief Justice of the Delhi High Court. It was Justice Shah who wrote the decision of the High Court of Delhi in the Naz Foundation case, which was the case that struck down the 150-year-old rule of the Indian Penal Code, which penalised consensual, adult, private, same-sex uh, relations. And Justice Shah was there. I declared that he was a liberator. He'd lifted the scourge of that colonial law, which still exists in 41 out of 53 countries of the Commonwealth of Nations, the old British Empire. It still exists in those countries to blight the lives of gay people. But Justice Shah was the liberator. But the God-botherers are at work even in India. The God-botherers have appealed the decision of the Delhi High Court to the Supreme Court of India, the government of India has not. The government accepts the decision, but the God-botherers will take it to the Supreme Court of India, and we must hope that that great court will affirm the right to equality and dignity, which was the foundation of Justice Shah's decision and the decision of his court. Another participant was Dame Carol Kiddu, widow of the late Chief Justice of Papua New Guinea, the only woman in the Parliament of Papua New Guinea. And she's foremost in endeavouring to get rid in that country of the inheritance from Australia, from the criminal code of Queensland, which Queensland's got rid of, but which still blights the lives of 
gay people and sexual minorities in uh, Papua New Guinea. She's endeavoured to get rid of it, sweep it away by legislative means, but uh, she's constantly troubled by the missionaries, the, the Protestant churches up there which attack the notion that uh, Papua New Guinea, which for eons live without it, can live without it again. So this was the meeting and it was a rather uplifting meeting as you'll understand and as I got back into the Qantas jet on the long way home I felt uplifted but then over the last week I felt a bit depressed and I've tried to analyse, well why do you feel depressed? Why do you feel depressed when there are such good people struggling to get rid of this baggage of the past of injustice and humiliation? Well, if I analyse it, it's because of events that are happening far away and close at home. Uh, far away uh, in the last week or little more, the Pope spoke in uh, Portugal, which like Spain is considering a provision for gay marriage. And His Holiness declared that one of the two greatest evils in the world was same-sex marriage. One of the two... You can disagree about same-sex marriage. <laughs> you can think, you know, that you should get by with just sort of living in sin. <laughs> An awful lot of people do it now. But to call it the greatest evil, one of the greatest evils, well, give us a break. <laughs> You'd think that those who are close to the thing would know a few larger evils, more recent evils, that they should be concentrating on. But that was what the Pope taught. I asked my partner, Jan, who's put up with me for 41 years, do you think we would get married? And he said, it's definitely too early to tell. <laughs> And then I thought about it, I thought, well, even if it was available, which it's not, even if it was available, I don't think we would get married. After 41 years, you've got to be very careful about the, 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 the magic of it. You know, you wouldn't want to do any harm to it. And if it came unstuck, it'd be an awful lot of moolah. I'd have to cop up. So it's not a personal thing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a personal thing. I am not making a personally involved uh, anxiety here, but one of the greatest evils, well, really, you've got to get a bit more clear thinking. And then I came back to Australia, and I saw on the television a, pic a, a picture, you probably saw it yourself, of the two young men in Malawi. Their hands were bound. They are life partners. One is 23 and one is 27. One is Stephen and one is Tiwonga. Uh, they're not actually two gay men because Tiwonga is a, a transsexual and they've had a celebration. They had the hide to have a celebration. They were arrested with heavy-handed uh, uniforms. They were charged under this old British law and they have been convicted and sentenced to 14 years imprisonment. 14 years imprisonment. I saw them bound together. The, the uh, film just showed their two hands in manacles bound together. So this is a worldwide thing. And it's the Protestant churches in Malawi that say the, the government must persist, we must ignore outside, this is against our morality, it's against African traditions. Well, it's not against African traditions, it's something that was brought with the colonial baggage. But there it is. And in the United States of America, they've nominated, uh, President Obama has nominated uh, Ellen Kagan, a very distinguished academic solicitor general. But what can they talk about for a life appointment to the highest court in that land? Not her experience, not her scholarship, not even her views and her values, but her private sexual existence. It's a great world of infotainment out there, and this is what we are debased in discussing. And if you think of Australia, well, things haven't been all that good in 
our country in the last uh, short while. Uh, now, there's a, a footballer in Victoria. Uh, his name is Jason Akamanis. He doesn't know me, and I don't know him. But I saw his reported statement, which gets huge coverage, because he is a guru for young people, saying young people uh, in sport have got to hide their sexual identity. Must never, never tell it. He, he's not too disturbed that it exists. Just don't tell it, because we don't want anybody touching another person's bum in good uh, in a good sense in the showers and not knowing whether that other person might just react. Uh, and uh, Jason Akamanis is listened to solemnly by huge audiences with his views on this subject. And then last week in this state uh, legislation was introduced for a civil uh, relationships registration. And I looked through the reports of the politicians uh, in this state who solemnly said this must not be allowed, this endangers and damages the institution of marriage, uh, and people who might, uh, with the change of government, be in office and with responsibility for law, uh, came forward and said this is something that we just cannot have. A relationships register. We're not talking about marriage with confetti. We're talking about a register, like registering your dog. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a second-class status of citizenship. Not marriage, not even civil partnership and civil union. That's been banned by the federal government. This is, uh, in the state government, a registration. Well, I don't think I'll be going anywhere near that. Equality and dignity. One of the members of parliament said, we don't really mind giving, we don't mind now, though they fought it like hell before, we don't mind giving the pension and money, but the dignity of recognition of relationships is not on. Well, that is a great sadness, I think, and we've got to get over it. And thirdly, you may have seen in the last day or so something which in a week, in a month, in a year, most of us will have forgotten. The humiliation uh, of a minister, the destruction of his career, the damage to his family, to his wife and to his children, revealing that he went to a gay sauna. Dr Kinsey taught me back in the 1940s that human sexuality is not a matter of two boxes. There are the straights and the gays, the homosexuals and the heterosexuals. It is a spectrum. And in all people's lives, it is part of a spectrum of nature. And it's not a big deal. But the exploration of it is just not acceptable to the newsroom of Channel 7. Channel 7 Sydney should uh, hold its head in shame. They are serial anti-homophobes. <laughs> Don't forget that it was Channel 7, it was Channel 7 that hounded an, the first openly gay president of the Law Society of this state, hounded him to his death. I saw him deteriorate and die. Uh, homophobia, you can have your world days and you can have meetings in Hong Kong, but it is endemic. It is endemic in Australia and America. It's not so, such a big deal. Spain, for goodness sake. Albania is discussing uh, gay marriage. And if that is so everywhere else, we've just got to get with it. And people who've got a problem with it have to take an aspirin, they've got to have a lie down, <laughs> and they'll all feel better in the morning. And the churches have to look at the scriptures and learn the lesson that text is ambiguous. Holy text is a metaphor and a poem. And you have to look at it and text cannot be inconsistent with science. They've got to look again. And so, uh, fellow citizens, uh, this is a time when we have to say in a very clear voice, not only in our country, but let it go forth from Ted 
X in Sydney, 2010. Secularism is the defence of spiritualism. Secularism defends your right to have your beliefs and to have no belief, to accept God or to not believe in God. It is the reason for the success of the uh, English constitutional principle and we have to guard it and defend it in our country and in all countries. It is the way in which in the end we will get rid of these horrible laws, we will establish equal justice under law for every citizen and we will respect the dignity of all of us in this great uh, continental country.